<laughs> Some of you might wonder why I'm up in a tree. <laughs> For that, you're going to have to watch a lot of freaking videos to really understand. Um, but largely speaking, it's because this is the Behavior Beast series, and where else do you find beasts but in trees? <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, it's probably a bad joke, but whatever. It's my joke, and <laughs> he damn near hit his head on a tree. I mean, there was like, whoo, quarter inch of space there, folks. That was, uh, that was well, that was, I don't know, what? <laughs> well aligned, I guess, is the term. Um, so, psh, yeah, the white book. Behavior analysis. Um, <laughs> I just looked, Reese, I just looked for a place to throw this, and I couldn't let go. I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't let it slide out of my hands. It's that important. Uh, no, it's actually a pretty good book. Um, whoa, I about fell on my bacon, um, which has nothing to do with, sir, never mind. Bad philosophy jokes. Um, huh, applied behavior analysis. What do you want to know? I mean, you can look at our definition, which tells you a little bit about it. Uh, I could give you a little bit of a story, so I suppose. I'm not gonna give you all the details because they're in like 75 different places written really well. So I'm just gonna tell you that experimental analysis of behavior was around since the early 1900s. And then in the 1950s and the early 60s, people started applying those principles to, to, to everyday problems. To be like, oh my gosh, we have this understanding of behavior. So why don't we apply this understanding of behavior and these principles that we've discovered in the laboratory, discovered? That's an interesting word. Discovered in the laboratory uh, to everyday problems. There was some nursing stuff going on. There was um, some stuff with, well, terms that I'm probably not going to use on YouTube very often. Uh, but again, you can look up this stuff. Uh, but by the early, by the mid 1960s, uh, a lot of different researchers had, I'm not, I really don't want to get into names. I, you'll find out over time that I don't like getting into researchers' names. Um, it's too easy to screw up. But anyway, uh, people like Bijou, uh, Bijou, sorry. Um, Alan, you know, um, I don't know, Michael, <laughs> a few big names here started doing some really applied work. And the field eventually started to grow, right? And people got interested in solving applied problems using these technologies and these, these procedures that have been discovered, discovered in the laboratory. So through Skinner's early work and Watson's stuff and whoa, and Pavlov's stuff and all sorts of different things, um, we eventually figured out that you could solve everyday problems like how to climb a tree. Right? So if somebody doesn't know how to climb a tree, you could teach them, right? I suppose um, that that's a problem, but or not. My kids don't know how to climb trees, and I don't either, which is why I weird how you <laughs> let you figure out how I got in the tree. <laughs> Brad's pretty strong. Um, so anyway, uh, so we started solving everyday problems with these with, with behavior analysis, and the end result being that in 1968 the field was officially formalized. Uh, there was the founding of the Java Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis, and then, of course, the canonical paper written by Bayer, Wolf, and Risley, uh, which we'll talk about at another time. But really, Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis and, and Applied Behavior Analysis in general, 1968, that's where it's at. That's when the program started. That's when uh, we hit the gas, and kind of the field went nuts. It wasn't like it was brand new that year. It wasn't just, poof, just you know, an apparition just came out of nowhere. It it gently and slowly developed out of the work that Skinner and other researchers were doing in the laboratory and just that realization that we might be able to use these to, uh, to solve everyday problems. And I, that social significance, that social value of solving a problem that's a problem for everyone or at least for one person is what makes our field genuinely unique, I think, it, at least in psychology. It really is about the individual. It's not just about a group of people or the average response. It's about your response. It's about how the heck you get out of a tree. Um, so anyway, Oh, that was a lot higher than it looks. <laughs> because, notice, it's not even up to my boobs. Well, maybe. Yeah, kind of up to my boobs. Anyway, so, there you go, folks. See you later. Uh, that was enough on Applied Behavior Analysis. Take care. See you.